What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode number 15 of Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space every single week. My name is Yeso, back to host as always, joined by my co-host Luke Shimona Hebrew. Luke, a couple weeks off, but welcome back. It's good to hang out with you again. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks off, but I feel like somehow we, the number went up again. So I, I feel that like that is every, how it works every you know, time we record a new episode. Yeah. I feel like we're like still on episode <laughs> three and we're like episode 15 now. So good to be back. Yep. Um, it's holiday season, so it's just always crazy. Um, pretty much on every aspect of whether it be life or business or um, gaming. <laughs> that's for sure. That's been that's been crazy too. But uh, it's been good. I've been excited. I, I finally got my new PC set up at my new place. So nice. I was able to get some games in, test out that new internet. I heard you guys jazz. had a good run on uh, Infinite last night. You know, so. it, it, as good of a run as I can have. <laughs> you know, and we and we take those. But I I do have to do a special shout out here to Bradley over at, at the Razor side. I've been mm-hmm. trying out those new Halo Razor peripherals that came out. I don't know if you saw any of those, but they mm-hmm. are uh, super cool. You know, like the uh, the overall aesthetic of them is very, you know, old school Halo, like yeah. Master Chief. I mean, I have like the uh, the original Master Chief three, Xbox 360. I have, I even, my original Xbox, I even actually bought a skin, like a green skin, because I liked mm-hmm. Halo so much back in the day, right? So it was just, um, it feels good to just, I feel like, come full circle and be yeah. back into that Halo grind, but... Um, but yeah, it's good. Good to be back. Episode fifteen. Here I'm we excited. Are. We're only a couple of days from the release of Halo Infinite officially, and I've seen incredible reviews for the campaign. So I cannot wait to get my hands on that. I'm going to have to renew my uh, Xbox Game Pass subscription this week so I can you know play. Who to call? Yeah, yeah. So Me. looking forward to that. But we've got a ton of things uh, to talk about here this week. Kind of two weeks uh, of news. But let's start at the top. Uh, we'll hit on apex uh, a few times during the show but let's start with the algs uh and the split one playoffs land that was scheduled for i believe mid-january and i think it got leaked that it was going to be in london but uh the apex team and the algs team came out last week and announced that that land is in fact going to be canceled uh due to obviously the omicron variant that's been going around right now um so the playoffs are going to pivot from an international land to regional playoffs with the top 20 teams uh in each individual pro league so uh a bummer because obviously we've seen multiple different lands for different titles coming out and apex is one of those titles that we've yet to see return uh to land and it's going to take at least a little bit longer till we get there (sighs) yeah nothing but l's Mm. here for the gaming community super big bummer having all this lead up to just another online tournament that we've seen a hundred thousand times yeah you know, the Apex scene is in such a good spot that, like, a LAN, like a, you know, a cross-region LAN would, you know, honestly, would be incredible. Like, the amount of hype and the amount of, you know, superstars that would be made, you know, like, new players that could come out from the, you know, the underworkings, if you will. It's mm-hmm. like, that's where it all happens. Like, that's where you get big, you know what I mean? Like, the the Monsoon legacy, the How legacy, all those sure. legacies come from LAN, you know? Like, you can get far online, but it's just like... Everybody knows that lands what matters, you yeah. know. So I would love to see it, but obviously kudos to EA for doing what they had to do sooner rather than later. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it's it's obviously the, the amount of lo- we've talked about it a dozen times on the show. The logistical nightmare that is running lands right now, and the amount of capital and knowledge that it takes to do it properly. Yep. Um, and without that level of confidence, like let's say Riot, for example, has that confidence and knows that they can do it with their um, with their ecosystem, their their staff, their you know their dollars, their venues, their partners, etc. And you know, obviously, EA isn't as confident, which is pretty fair. Yep. It's pretty hard to be as confident as you know as we're making it seem, right? But um, EA, you know, just had to make that decision, and you know, we'll we'll be at land eventually. You know, it's only a matter of time. But, uh, of course, it's it's a big L for the gaming community, for sure, or the yeah. Apex community. Uh, and in the statement, they said the goal is still to hopefully have the split two playoffs yeah. uh, on land, which is good. They're still uh, hopefully going to make that a reality, and hopefully we can get through kind of this Omicron stuff right now and, and, and get to uh, that land. Because it feels like not only you talk about land is, is the most important when it comes to any game, um, but also it feels like finally having that international land will – also be a huge opportunity for apex because we've talked about this as well multiple times on the show how it really seems that 
uh, Apex is peaking big time and continuing to grow. Obviously, a lot of the biggest streamers in the game have come back to Apex over the last four to six months and have, have loved it. Uh, you know, we even saw a team of essentially all streamers in Sheesh qualifying for the Pro League. So Apex is hype right now. It is the biggest battle royale, battle royale out there right now. And it feels like a LAN, an international LAN, is like finally uh, going to be that big payoff of all of this buildup, and obviously it's a shame that it's going to be delayed. Um, but, you know, I guess in the end, my hope is that, okay, EA, you know, I'm totally down for you guys to uh, postpone it and at least cancel this first uh, part of the land, but I hope then that there really is an effort to make this the most incredible event a few months from now, whenever the split two playoffs are planned for. Uh, I hope they really, really go all out with it uh, because I think from a talent perspective, uh, in terms of like the players and the teams that will attend, it's going to be insane, right? Uh, so I just hope that they say, all right, let's go out with a huge bang. Uh, and then obviously that'll lead into what will hopefully be the world championship land as well following that. So uh, I agree. I think it's a bummer. I'm totally down for EA to do this. I think, you know, protect the players. I'm all about it. Um, but it is in the end disappointing. So. Yeah, I feel like I could talk about this topic forever because mm -hmm. I feel like with his with the, with the resource that EA has, it's absolutely doable to fly sure. the players out, isolate them, get them tested, don't allow media in, yeah. make the land happen, right? You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's I feel like you can get there to a certain extent, but it's also like uh, one slip up. What's the PA ni PR nightmare look like? Like how do you get those? How many resources do you really have to allocate, and is it worth the resources you allocated mm -hmm. to? Like who are you selling that to? You know, like it's not like Everyone knows esports doesn't make game developers money. You know what I mean? Like, it's not netting the money. They're absolutely, they would lose money on a land. Like, there's no way for them to make sure. their money back on a land, <laughs> right? But it's it's about, like, the overall growth of the, the ecosystem. So yeah. I think that what they're doing is in, is in the right direction. But I hope that um, it doesn't end with it just being a money conversation where, mm -hmm. like, we never can have the land because it's going to cost them too much money. Yeah, we'll have to see how that develops. But obviously, now we just have a future land to look yeah. forward to for split two i think in you said it was supposed to be in europe right i, be next I to... believe what i saw was that there was possibly a leak with uh i think something on like the apex youtube channel where i think it was uh, like an ad for this past weekend because the algs finished it with like a a super week of sorts where they had basically all the teams in north america and i believe most of the pro leagues played two weeks worth of competition yeah. over the weekend uh, and I think there was an ad that went out on their YouTube channel that said, oh, teams are prepping for London mm. in, like, the description. Dang, I was wanting to go so to So I think London. that's how it got I leaked. heard they have good Kiwis. Yeah? But okay. just a rumor. So in more Apex Legends news, uh, let's talk about something we uh, teased a week ago, and, or two weeks ago, I should say, and then we finally got uh, the official announcement last Wednesday, and that is, in fact, Verholst. Departing eSports Arena. Oh, he will man. be joining TSM, competed with them over the weekend uh, in, in the Pro League, and it's finally completely out there. The rumor that nobody had any idea was going to happen, totally blindsided the entire Apex Legends community, but Verholst has joined TSM. You know, I would say it kind of did blindside them because of how much trolling there was. <laughs> <laughs> that who knows? Like, honestly, like, at the point where I was a part of the thing, right? Sure. Part of the whole transfer and conversation and stuff, right? Like, from, you know, most of the A to Z. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to believe the internet. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sitting there every time I'm opening Twitter, it's like, this guy gets signed. This guy's getting, everyone's getting signed. Everybody's I leaving love, everything. I love that all the pro players leaned into the baits on Twitter for, like, three days. They were just like... Everybody's posting the contract sign gif. Oh, so excited for this opportunity. Everybody's just hard baiting. I do, I do a lot of itself. like, I do like a lot of like, you know, market research and just like general like um, watching different people's like Twitter accounts of the different teams and how the organizations do, right? Because like, you know, we're always working with the different orgs to like maximize viewership and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> and it's so funny because um, like last week I was doing some some more like research on certain certain players and their social reach and stuff like that and i kept having to scroll like a month back in time to get like realistic numbers because mm -hmm. like the last like two weeks have been so inflated <laughs> with like bs that i'm like nope i'm not taking these numbers these are count. not realistic numbers yeah. like no way bro like but it's it's been really um 
it's been a interesting transition, you know, obviously with Snipe down going to um, Halo yep. and uh, with Verholz taking over that kind of like fragger spot and with Noct coming over to play with Esports Arena um, over these last couple of weeks in tournaments as well. It's been really interesting, you know, it's that kind of synergy that three player three man teams have for playing with each other for half a year, year plus, two mm -hmm. years, whatever, um, isn't generated overnight, sure. you know, and it's one of those things where you know, if, if me and you play the same game together all the time, like, I might have habits of specific call-outs, right, that you know exactly what I mean, or you know how I rotate, or you know, like, what guns I like, and et cetera, like, that high level, obviously, right? But mm -hmm. it's the same way with, with these type of teams where there's there's definitely going to be some... Um, growing pains. Some growing pains, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that we've seen a little bit of that, but overall, I think that both Esports Arena and TSM had pretty decent weeks for being brand new rosters. Yeah. Yeah, I think they I think they both performed uh, well. I think esports arena probably will have to deal with the most growing pains, uh, just because uh, you know it, it really seems like due to Verhol streaming and, and playing a lot of just like playing on the ladder with Hal and reps pretty frequently prior to all of this kind of coming to a head, um, they had already been kind of putting in that time. Um, meanwhile, obviously the knocked situation joining esports arena a little less kind of advanced notice on that front so it's going to take them i think a little more time to get their uh their legs under them but i would say uh having you know played a ton of games this past weekend uh is certainly going to help that and now i think the fact that it won't be a lan for split one playoffs is i would say a buff to team esports arena I now agree. i don't think that they were going to go to lan uh and, and bomb out um, but I think when you look at the fact that now you keep it online, you continue to build synergy with this uh, this new third with Noct coming in, I think uh, it is a positive change for the squad as they continue to build that synergy. So uh, I think in the end, Team Esports Arena, I think, comes out honestly a lot better than I think a lot of people would predict when you lose a guy like Verholz because I actually think Skittle Cakes deserves a lot more credit than I think has been he has been given uh, for the success of this squad. Verholz mm. has obviously been like that leading name, but when you look at the numbers, I think Skittle Cakes is an incredible fragger. I mean, look at Series E. Exactly. Right. MVP most mm -hmm. most kills. Most kills. Yeah, I was and, like, and, and Dupe, Dupe got most and Dupe had most damage. Yeah. So uh, when you look at it, I think Skittle Cakes is uh, kind of flown under the radar because of Verholz and the the profile he's been able to build over the last few months. And then you build a, bring in a guy like Noct, who has an incredible wealth of experience, uh, was uh, you know playing in, with Cloud9 at, at Champs back in June, and they were in the position to win Champs going into those last few games. Uh, so I think this roster will be really good. And, and I mean, the ceiling could be just as high, if not higher, as the roster with Verholz. And then you look at TSM, they're going to be incredible. It's going to be good for them. I think they will continue to be one of the most dangerous rosters in the world. And we'll just have to see how quickly they round kind of back into the form that we know for TSM. I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I think that LAN, the most interesting part about LAN for me is the European teams. Mm -hmm. Because think about European teams more than just the fact that they, you know, have different play styles, you know, they uh, prefer a different general meta, whatever it might be, right, is the landing zones. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that it's that's one of those that's what really pushes the battle royale genre to its peak is when, you know, the best team in North America probably has the same landing spot as the best team in Europe. Yeah. So what happens? And like those storylines and that overall kind of mix up, and I feel like that's really where it comes down to. And I think that us having more time offline is like you said, a, a buff to esports arena yep. because I think we do need to hone in and lock in that landing component, even though right now we have three POIs. So if Europe takes one, <laughs> we'll just take a different one. And, <laughs> well, and if you ask, uh, what is it? I think it's like Team Kick that played in yeah. the Knights Carters Cup. Uh, if you challenge Team Esports Arena... That's a zero for six. Good, good That's luck. That's a zero for six. Good Try again, luck. Chief. You're going to get fried. Uh, definitely a lot to follow uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, ALGS front. We'll talk a little bit more about it later in the show. But let's uh, swap over to some League of Legends news. Cloud9 officially announcing their coach for their LCS team, LS. Yep. The storied content creator, streamer, analyst, uh, former coach in the LCK uh, is coming from Korea over back to the States to coach Cloud9. Uh, and I want to highlight an interesting quote because LS did uh, an AMA 
uh, over the weekend. And when asked about his year-long goals for the team and for the players, he said, quote, semis at Worlds at least, Fudge being the best Western mid laner, Blabber becoming the best Western jungler. I think not winning spring slash summer would be a failure. Even if we get second, it's not good enough, end quote. That is, like, getting a quote like that from LS is not surprising me because he's always been extremely confident, but that is quite a list of goals for the Cloud9 roster. Uh, <laughs> I mean, does LS want the good news or the bad news first? Because I'd say the good news is that his roster has a lot of potential. Yes, I think the ceiling is very, very high. It's a very good-looking roster. I think the bad news is... Uh, that that some of those goals might be impossible uh, because it's you're not coaching a, an NA team. Yeah, LS, because uh, a you're on NA and b mm -hmm. look at the other mid laners and jungles that mm -hmm. are in North America. He's talking about he said best in North America. Best he said best in the West. Best in the West. Oh, for Blabber and Fudge, which is that is. I mean, I think That's, I think it says it all that you even thought like it would just be hard to be best in NA, <laughs> let alone the West, right? I mean. No way. Sorry, no. I mean, Blabber, uh, I think Blabber, uh, no. Hmm. Maybe top five. Top five is good. I mean, look. There's a lot, man. That's I mean, a, that's a great, I mean, whatever. I would say, while it may not be his goal, if Fudge and Blabber were top five at their position in the West by world's time, by next fall, I'd say that's an incredible achievement. I agree. LS would probably think that's not quite enough and believes in their potential. And I obviously love the fact that he looks at this team and is like, these players are sick. They have the peaks can be incredibly high. Yeah. I just, I would agree. I don't know that it's that realistic, especially in a year's time, especially when you're looking at a player like Fudge, who, you know, obviously I know, and we talked about it when we uh, talked about the roster move, that LS believes that Fudge is essentially was a mid laner playing top lane and feels that that transition can be good. But I'm not buying that. Fudge is going to roll swap in his second year in the LCS and then go on to be the best Western mid laner in a year's time. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where, like, we talk a lot about, like, the NA teams and, like, how they can get better and what they need to do this and that. But it's, like, at all the same time and all that's going on, like, T1's just getting better. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the semis at Worlds is your game plan, your year one with this roster. That I mean, I, I, am I crazy that that actually feels like the most realistic goal in that uh, list? Like he, I mean, winning I don't, I don't the goals. The if you look at the goals being it's Fudge best winning. Western mid laner, Blabber best Western jungler, winning both spring and summer in North America, and then going to semis at Worlds. Dude, I actually feel like summer, semis is the most spring realistic. and summer has got to be at least a little easier than getting to Worlds at or getting semis at Worlds. I, I just, it's got to be because it's only North American teams. Know, it has to be easier, JC. I okay, will not stand okay. for this slander. I will, I will allow that, but I will say semis is, I feel like, not that unrealistic yeah. past winning s spring and summer in North America. Yeah, I think I would agree if I hadn't just seen the teams that played in this year's Worlds um, because they're just going to eat them alive. But I think that uh, I think that the roster is strong. I am excited for the new season. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. And I'm curious to see what Ellis does. I mean, I think he did some really good things when he was working with BBQ Olivers uh, in mm. Korea. And obviously he has a, a mind for the game and also brings just a very uh, a, a different way of looking at the game. Which Ellis we need, bro. We lose a lot of drafts. And I'll Ellis take, is the I'll, draft god. No, I'm, that's supposedly. what I'm saying. I'll so, take the brain. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to argue that piece itself. I mean, again, I think it's it's a lot of those achievements are, are difficult. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... You can win the game in draft and become the best jungler just because you're better at draft. Hey, <laughs> and, I'm all about it, bro. And I am all for shooting for the stars yeah, and landing in the clouds. I agree. So I'm all about it. I'm excited. I, I think that Cloud9 roster is cool, and adding LS to the equation I think makes it even better. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's talk a little bit of CDL. Not something we touch on super often here on the podcast, but there was an article from uh, Deserto that I wanted to touch on because I thought the uh, – the title of the article was interesting. The title said, Call of Duty League faces make or break season in 2022. Uh, and the article was very specifically talking about uh, the lack of viewership growth for the CDL, competition with other titles like Warzone, obviously Halo Infinite jumps into the equation as well as others. Uh, and then players just generally not being happy with Vanguard as a title. And obviously you have the fact that 
the CDL switches to a new game every single year. Um, what are your thoughts on kind of the CDL situation here? Because obviously Activision Blizzard has a ton of problems outside of this, but when you look at kind of the state of the CDL and kind of sort of the Overwatch League uh, on another side, do you feel like this is maybe make or break for the CDL? Um, you know, it's it's pretty hard, right? Because on one hand, you're dealing with like one of the most successful, if not the most successful gaming franchise of all time. Sure. Right? Which is Call of Duty. Like, dominates sales, dominates name recognition, share of voice, all of it, right? It just mm -hmm. absolutely dominates. Um, even when, you know, Fortnite is like, oh, yeah, everybody knows what Fortnite is. But it's like, cool, everybody knew what Call of Duty was 10 years before Fortnite was even existed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Call of Duty is always like, you know, it has so much weight to it. So it's a pretty hard situation. But, again, it ties back to something I said a little bit earlier, and even in just this episode, which is just where's the return on esports? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Activision, which I think a lot of us know, or primarily focused on making money. Mm -hmm. And the esports doesn't make money. You know what I mean? Like it might, you know, support a specific ecosystem or a specific community base, maybe help boost some sales. But if CDL didn't exist, Call of Duty sales, honestly, probably pretty similar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. Like nobody cares. Like m most of their player base right now probably just plays Warzone anyway. And like, what's going on in Warzone? Do you even buy Warzone? I don't even think you, I don't even think, I think it's free. Warzone is free, yeah. You know, so I, I, I think it's pretty, I think like multiplayer Call of Duty, which is what CDL is essentially, mm -hmm. is getting towards the like make or break type vibe right like I, yeah. I i don't disagree i think that you know they sold out to youtube that flopped they tried to build like a, a, a location regional you know sports type ecosystem that flopped they tried to um they haven't even tried to make warzone competitive which blows my mind so that's a flop mm -hmm. i just I see, I see no direction. I see no attempts. I see very little effort. The CDL is like the most forced garbage crap I've ever seen. To be honest, I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. Like it's the most, the most of the teams that are involved, like probably get their slots given to them for free. Like I doubt anybody is paying for a CDL slot. Anybody. Like I think a 20. What do you mean? It was a 25 million dollar buy-in for the slots. That's what I'm saying. I, I think they gave most of them for free. Like I would not be surprised if they literally had to pay hundred thieves to take the slot. Like, Nade Shot came out. You know, you remember this. Nade Shot came yeah, out and was like, no chance. Like, that kind of stuff behind the scenes. Like, I've talked to teams who were in the Overwatch League. I've talked to, you know, the teams mm -hmm. who purchased those slots before. And it's like, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes sure. because they just want to make it look good. They forced the Overwatch League and, the you know, the Call of Duty League and yeah. a lot of that stuff into existence. I've been to those events. I've been to those venues. Like, I just don't see it. And I never have seen it. And I... I I doubt that based on everything else that's going on, that they're going to do anything, any type of significant support or change or anything along those lines. So I've kind of written it off personally for quite a while. Like sure. I, I haven't really thought about either one of those as like a competitive esports title that I'd be interested in thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, like I can honestly probably can't even name the teams. Like the last thing I can remember from Overwatch League is like the Shanghai Dragons going on like an 80 loss streak or something. And in Call of Duty, but then they won this year. Yeah, yeah, and then they won the next yeah. year, or whatever it is. And obviously the Champions Go Shock. I was like at the championship mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But you know, there's a little of a little bit of a long-winded rant. But overall, I, I would just say that I do think that it is mostly a, a make-or-break type scenario because they needed a complete and total 360, 180. Yes, 180, not a three. Don't do a 360. <laughs> Holy. Don't do that. That is the last thing you yeah. want to do. Um, but hey, that's the way the, the Kiwi crumbles. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I look at the CDL and the Overwatch League, and I think about the most successful esports, uh, and when you want to look at one when it comes to franchising, you have to look at League of Legends. Uh, it took a long time for the League e ecosystems to build up to a spot where they said, hey, we think franchising makes sense. We're going to move to it for a, a, a majority of our regional leagues. Uh, that's the direction we're going to move in. And when I look at Overwatch and the CDL, it feels like they didn't. It, it feels like they didn't lay the groundwork and didn't put in the time. Which is also crazy when you look at you talk about Call of Duty and the history of the franchise and how long it's been around and the esport has been around for a long time as well. But it just seems like. Activision Blizzard didn't put in the groundwork for either of these things. They just went, we just want to do a franchise league. We're going to make it huge. It's going to be crazy. 
and got a bunch of people to buy in at first, and it seems like the foundation wasn't there, and that's why things are falling apart. Um, so, you know, you know, and, and I'm not a Call of Duty fan, obviously, so I'm like not the best one to talk about this, but it just seems like they didn't do their homework and didn't lay the groundwork in that foundation for it to be successful long term, and I think that is showing right now. So uh, I agree. I think it is kind of a make or break year, and if I was a betting man, I'm leaning more break. Uh, yeah, well, too make. bad I don't the break think odds are out. like a thousand to one because they're obviously going to flop. Like it's like a, I literally feel like it's a guaranteed flop this year. Yeah, I think I think it will flop. So like I've been I've been working with Activision Blizzard for a very long time and a lot of different titles. They're like zero for ninety. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a, a rough year. And obviously, you know, I feel for the Call of Duty fans. You know, I may not like your title or your esport, but but honestly, I'd love dude, it for it to succeed. The Call of Duty, the Call of Duty dream has just been reimagined so many times, and now it's like. Dude, Apex Legends, man. Mm -hmm. Apex Legends is just better. Yeah. Like Apex, you know what I mean? And then Halo is attempting to do it right. I mean, I've actually been kind of intrigued in the Halo side of things. It's just like, it is so less popular than Call of Duty. It's crazy. Like in, From like an esports side or just like the game? In general. Like just in general. Like the amount of like, the lack of like influencer support of a game like Halo in comparison just because like, it's not as easy as Call of Duty is. Like, I'm like Call, Call of Duty is literally like anybody can yeah. kill anybody at any time ever without eyes closed, you yeah. know? Like, so I, I, I would have loved to see more of Halo take over more of the community and, like, people get kind of into, like, the competitive side of it. But I think when you look at the fact that Halo multiplayer is free to play, I think they're very much set up to take a good chunk of that Call of Duty market share and bring in a lot of those fans. Dude, I just and feel like... since it's cross-platform now, so you can be on console or PC. But don't you kind of feel like Halo just isn't built for casuals in the, in the same way? Like, Call uh... of Duty, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, Fortnite, all these games, they literally, like, if you're a new player, you're, you can have an absolute blast playing those games. I agree that I think Call of Duty, generally, as a franchise, is more casual-friendly, but I... I don't know that Halo is like that unfriendly to the to uh, to a casual player, especially especially if it's someone who is played other FPS titles. I think I think it's fine. Hmm. Uh, now we'll have to see how that pans out, but I will say, with all the decisions being made at three four three and with the HCS team, the you know they're go leaning back into the roots of the the Halo esports circuit and what made it great back in the day. Uh, in building that entire ecosystem around that now, the availability of the game. I think they are making all the right decisions. Uh, and I said this a, a few weeks back, even before we knew that the multiplayer was coming out early, that I think with the way they're setting things up, I think Halo is ready to, it, it has the opportunity to jump into League with the biggest esports titles out there. And I'm talking like the League of Legends, uh, CSGO, Valorant tier. I think Halo has that opportunity. Will they do it? I don't know, but I think they are making the right decisions to give themselves a shot at doing so. Because I feel like Halo in the modern esports era of like the last decade has not been there, but I think they could do it right now. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. I'm excited. I'm looking forward Raleigh. to it as well. Raleigh. Very soon, less than two weeks. Mm. I'm looking forward to I'm it. scared. Uh, let's talk about Tyler One. Tyler One admits his brutal Twitch streaming deal might lead to him retiring. Uh, Tyler One, obviously one of the biggest streamers out there, especially in the League of Legends space. He's incredibly popular, signed with T1, and he uh, has been streaming a, a ton lately. And uh, this article talks about he often streams 10 hours or more uh, because he is contracted to do 200 hours a month for Twitch, but it has been so hard on him. He is apparently considering retiring. What does that make you think? Um, it's pretty common uh, with a lot of brand deals when it comes to like stream platforms that the number one complaint on the Twitch side is just the sheer number of hours required to stream, mm -hmm. um, which from a Twitch brand perspective is, you know, it makes a lot of sense, right? They want 
the top streamers streaming as much as possible so that mm -hmm. their website gets as much traction. Like, I mean, I'll use myself as an example. You know, I'm a big Ninja fan, right? I like Ninja a lot. When Ninja left Twitch, it was like pretty brutal for me, right? Because it's like I would watch, actually, I would mostly watch Ninja and Shroud mm -hmm. every day. You know what I mean? Because, you know, Ninja and Shroud, when they yeah. left to the Mixer, I literally like, didn't know what to do. I was like lost, you know? And it felt kind of the same way as when Ninja or Shroud was like offline. I was like, who do I watch? You know, like who do I just throw on my Twitch channel on my second and third monitor? Like, if they're both offline, like, what do I do? So that type of um, mentality or, or situation amplified across all of Twitch, yep. their goal is to have the biggest um, streamers in each of the individual categories stream as much as possible. They try to cover all the time slots, right? So if, lack of better terms, if Ninja and Shroud cover all 24 hours, so they both stream 12 hours a day, then that, that's how they would try to set it up, right? Is that all 24 hours, one of your top streamers is always streaming, mm -hmm. right? Um, and with that, obviously, depending on the category and which, uh, what kind of demographic you attract based on what you stream, you know, they need you more or less certain times, whatever it is. So I'm not surprised that, um, that he's required to stream a lot of hours. I am surprised, however, that in today's age that people of, of that caliber can't push back. That, would, that was my first thought is like, and granted, when you're locked into a contract, it becomes a little bit more difficult, I guess. Luke says no, and I'll, I'll trust him <laughs> on that one. But like, that would be my thing is like, if it's grinding you into the ground and you obviously aren't enjoying it and the hours are brutal, yeah. which he, he talks about. He's like, it's, it's, it's killing his mood. And if he that, enjoy if, I, it. if I'm Tyler One's Twitch um, ambassador, right, mm -hmm. for lack of better terms, who cares what they're called? Like, wake up. Yeah, and I agree, right? Like, it, <laughs> like, it, it, you're talking about you want your best streamers on the platform streaming. Yeah. I would think it would be in Twitch's best interest to see this and be like, damn, Tyler's getting burnt out. Let's drop those hours. Let's drop it to, let's require 100 hours uh, a month. Cut mm -hmm. that in half. Mm -hmm. And then knowing Tyler one, he probably ends up still streaming a, a 120 to 150 because, you know, maybe now that he doesn't have that huge burn it on him, he's enjoying it more. He's willing to push it a little longer because he's having a good time. But it feels like, dude, if you have a guy that's basically getting almost no off days, averaging, you know, eight plus hours, 10 plus hours yeah, I don't know. a stream, it, like it, that's insane. It feels weird to me, right? Because I, I, again, I, I love using Ninja as an example because it's just an easy example. But mm -hmm. when Ninja was first like up and coming, right? He's like, okay, I don't want to stream all the time, mm -hmm. right? I can't stream all the time, but like I need my popularity to keep growing. So he plays with his friends. Dr. Lupo, Tim the Tapman, Jordan Fisher, enter random X person, his brothers, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Starts hosting them when he's offline. Starts building those other personalities to carry his community while he's offline, right? Because, yeah. like, I'm sorry, but you don't, probably don't think about Dr. Lupo without thinking about Ninja. Yeah. And if you do, then you're new. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because they didn't exist without him, right? Sure. So I, I think it's really interesting that... You know, it's not like, okay, Tyler One, like, who do you play with? Like, who are your boys? Like, let's get them streaming. You know what I mean? Like, again, like, as Twitch, like, you should be trying to grow Tyler One's ecosystem and make sure that, like, who he's playing with and who he interacts with and all that kind of stuff, like, that they're able to, you know, pick up that dead weight or let's reduce Tyler One. You know, let's start putting some more dollars and cents into X up-and-coming Twitch uh, League of Legends streamer and mm -hmm. reduce, you know, I just... I don't really fully understand how that works. Like Twitch has so many individual like community managers of all these different regions and stuff like that. I just assume that they would be able to support their one of their largest creators. And it could just be Tyler One farming some cloud. It could be him, farm, you know what I mean? So sure. it's like I don't want to lay the full, you know, I don't, I don't know Twitch the whole story. So yeah. you know, you know, it, you never know if people like Tyler One are just ranting because they've had a rough day or whatever it is because they totally can. That's totally his vibe too, right? Yeah. So um, I won't, I won't, I guess put a hard stamp on either either side of things. But if it is in that scenario, I would expect Twitch to do better. And if it's the other scenario, then, um, you know, yeah. get those viewers, baby. <laughs> you know? I, like, I would I say know. in the end, you know, Tyler, I don't watch a ton of streamers and I definitely don't watch Tyler one, but I would say uh, I think it would be a loss for Twitch uh, and for the league community if, if Tyler ended up retiring uh, over this. So hopefully uh, they can figure it out because I think it would not be uh, a good thing if he ended up stepping yeah. away. I made that more about Twitch than I did Tyler One, but yeah. I agree. <laughs> um, have you been playing TFT a lot lately? Dabble oh, is about a little bit. It's about Silco. So apparently Silco is coming to the TFT mid set update. What and about this will be muggers, huh? Dude, this will be the first uh, unit in TFT that is not a champion, champion in League of Legends. It is obviously from the universe. Um, but obviously Silco was so loved from Arcane 
and obviously they predicted it in some way. They must have watched it when people are going to love him because there's no way that they just started developing this character over the last month. Um, but this is really cool. I have they, have they awesome released stuff. anything about like what he's going to do or anything? Not that I know. Because like, so currently in TFT set uh, there is a sisters buff, yep. which is Vi and oh. Jinx. So I'm thinking there's going to be another. They're going to add an, an affix or something with him that either is like maybe he's a unit where if you have Vi and Jinx, then like. You know, kind of like, uh, I don't know if you guys, anyone's playing, like, you have a Yordle Lord, mm -hmm. where if you three-star every single Yordle, you start spawning Yordle Lords, mm -hmm. which are just like a Christmas Vagar, mm -hmm. uh, who's insane. Um, I think it might be a similar thing, where you might okay. be able to, like, because I don't think he's going to be, like, a, oh, th three cost, you know, this, that, and here's his thing. I don't think he's going to be a normal unit, okay. because he isn't a fighter. And that, that's my question, is, like, what if he is, what's theoretically? He do, yeah. yeah, what's his attack going to be? Because you don't see him fight so i kind of i'm kind of hoping he's like a supportive really. type character or maybe it's mm. like a it's a uh because this maybe season he's out there just with some shimmer well this season oh yeah dude. <laughs> just throwing no but seriously this season there's um like every like x amount of turns you get to pick one of these three oh, traits the core augments. you get to pick an augment and i'm thinking maybe you know it's an augment where it's you know summon silco if you mm -hmm. you know it's like that kind of vibe you know if you have sisters buff summon silco mm -hmm. or silco gives all your units shimmer buff or because like literally That'd be cool. Like they can get really creative with something TFT, and I think that I would be I would be absolutely shocked if he comes in as a normal unit. Yeah. Actually, I'd be incredibly disappointed and probably wouldn't play <laughs> because it's like there's no way, dude. They're gonna do something crazy, and I'm so excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's come on, more dog. Cool. You know what to do. It's definitely gonna make me come. I, you know, I haven't touched TFT a ton the last like I would say three weeks, but when Soko comes out, I'm definitely gonna go back and play at least a little bit for probably a week. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, 100 bucks an hour for your lessons if you're interested. Yeah. Um, I think I have somebody that'll do it for free. And there's also like masters in TFT. So Is it me again? It's James Lopez. Oh, he's free. Uh, like I said, free. <laughs> oh, I meant like he's sure. Like he's free. Sure. Like I'd like to see him try. Okay. All right. uh -huh. well, hey, scoreboard check. <laughs> check, the, hey, check the scoreboard. Luke, he's on top. All right. <laughs> uh, let's talk Series E. Okay. Last week was a big week for us here. We had Series E draft days for uh, Season 4 of Apex Legends on yeah. Wednesday, and then we had our first ever Series E Guilty Gear Stripe da draft day uh, on Thursday. It was a big week. How you uh, how you kind of feeling after putting those in the books and getting ready for the season? Feeling good. You know, it's good to launch a new Series E title, uh, which, again, is just for anyone who isn't too familiar with Series E. It's essentially just our semi-professional ecosystem that allows players yep. to compete in weekly tournaments, improve their skills, and then potentially earn a sponsorship uh, through one of our partners, right? So, for example, you'll have, you know, you could be sponsored by Team Intel or Team Excedrin, Team Vizio, Team Nerf, Team Razor, et cetera, et cetera, and compete in both Esports Arena and the ALGS or, you know, the... Um, HCS or whatever tournament series you're interested in playing in, but it's good to, it's good to, uh, <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> it's good to uh, it, it add another game in, right? Because for a long mm -hmm. time it was just Apex Legends, everyone just knew it as an Apex Legends series. Now we're breaking into the fighting game community with one of the new up and coming titles, Guilty Gear Strive. Some yep. of our newly signed players even performed really well at CEO this weekend. Um, and on top of that, of course, it just really opens the gates for us to continue providing opportunity for players across all different types of ecosystems, um, all different types of titles, et cetera. And it's really exciting just to keep kind of adapting that model and seeing how Series E evolves. Because Series yeah. E's evolved so much from day one of Apex Legends. Just, it just in Apex, it's evolved. And just in Apex. And now it's like, okay, we're starting where we're finishing, right? Where it's like, okay, we spent a whole year developing this. Now we, don't, we won't make the same mistakes. But now it's like, let's add a new game find those new hurdles and can you continue to evolve so we can keep adding more and more titles. Yeah, I think it's going to be incredibly exciting. I do want to give a special shout out uh, to our six Series E Guilty Gear Strive players. Uh, obviously, I got to spend a lot of time with them on Draft Day, interviewed all of them. Uh, they had a lot of really great answers. I think their stories are interesting. They are all super excited uh, about the opportunity, which I think is great. I'm excited to get to watch them uh, compete and it was awesome. You mentioned uh, them performing at CEO. Three of the six players that signed for season one of Guilty Gear Strive Series E made top nine. We had a ninth place finisher, seventh place, and fifth place at CEO of out of 768 players that entered in Guilty Gear. So that's 
insane. Congratulations to all three of them. Uh, it was Razo, uh, Idiosyncrasy, and Shine that placed in the top nine. So shout out to them. That was awesome to watch. Uh, and I'm so excited for this. I think it is incredibly promising. Obviously, the FGC seems to be very, very excited uh, uh, about this opportunity. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to it. I agree. Can't wait. We kick off uh, Series E Season 4 Apex Legends Tuesday night. So you may even be hearing this a little late, but Tuesday and Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here at twitch.tv slash esports arena. And we'll have Guilty Gear on Thursday. So look out for that, folks. Um, PlayStation is reportedly launching their own version of an Xbox uh, Game Pass. It could possibly release this coming spring what is uh what are your thoughts on that obviously we're big fans uh, of xbox here we work with them a ton they've been big supporters of us and playstation maybe trying to jump into that game pass market yeah my initial thoughts would be a that playstation is getting smacked around so it's yes. pretty smart to try to do something mm -hmm. b uh, i think it already exists and it has existed for an extremely long time I don't know that it's existed in terms of, uh, like, the wealth of titles available at a time, but I know they've done, like, you get a free title a month kind of thing. They've done, they've done, done. They've done a lot of different things, yeah. right? It's existed before. It's always been lame. I've mm -hmm. never liked it. <laughs> uh, my buddy, like, uh, my buddy of mine who's just, he plays through, like, he's just a grinder. He's game, single-player yeah. game, single-player game, single-player game. He's, like, beating everything. His Steam library, like, eats everyone's Steam library. Like, it's he's ludicrous. One of those guys, right? And he had it for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, you can like, yeah, you're right. Like you can like rent different titles. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you get like X amount of like credits and stuff and like whatever it is. But, you know, it's it's definitely the, the way that the world is moving to the point where you kind of have to be able to keep up because no one can afford to buy $60 games every week. Um, so I like that they're doing something with it. I think that it's so late. Like, I don't even know how you launch it with interest sure. to anybody. Like I, I, they could launch some kind of program and it might just like get swept under the rug. I mean, people can't even buy a PlayStation. Like, how are you supposed? Like, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be able to be connected to PC? And like, like Xboxes? I doubt it. I literally <laughs> doubt. Like, I, 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 I would, I, I would be extremely surprised if I was impressed. I guess I would leave it there. That's the thing for me is I feel like the bar is already set so high. When oh You yeah. look at what Xbox Game Pass does. It's like over two hundred titles. There's tons of games. Halo Infinite, for example, that you can play Dude, day sea, one of release. Sea of Thieves. There's like all the different Batman games. There's Forza games. There's that yep. uh, Kiwi Protectors. There's yep. um, I don't know. There's just literally game after game after game, and they're all free and all for day one game mm -hmm. day one Game Pass. So uh, those are already big hurdles. And then I think uh, 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 the point that you highlight there of Xbox Game Pass being both on console and PC. It's just like I, I I don't know how this does any more than just like, hey, people who are already PlayStation fans who already have their consoles maybe just pick this up as an addition. Where I whereas I feel like when you look at Game Pass, I feel like that's attracting new players, right? And especially because it's on PC and that can give that gives you access to a whole nother market of people. Uh, I don't think there's any way that this competes significantly with game pass i don't yeah it, it literally it, it can barely even be in the conversation yeah like the concept of like i'm sitting at my computer i'm gaming like having a good time on my pc maybe mouse and keyboard who knows whatever mm -hmm. and then i'm like ah okay like let's say i'm playing halo infinite playing yep. halo infinite on my pc i'm like boom I'm like all right like i'm pretty tired i'm probably gonna go to bed maybe i want to play another game or two go to my bed turn my xbox on lay in my bed you know mm -hmm. just back on i'm back on the same game yep. you know what i mean like same progression same battle pass everything and it's like so seamless like i just I can't imagine that PlayStation would be able to keep up as if they were. I figured they would have done something recently, but they've just been, like, dead in the water for, like, years. They released the PlayStation 5, and am I supposed to buy it so that I can play Ratchet and Clank? <laughs> because, honestly, I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty close to buying a PlayStation 5 so I can play Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> because I really want to play the new Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is cool. Yeah. Definitely a great, great classic series. We'll have to see how things uh, pan out there, and obviously when we get a release date, maybe more... Uh, yeah. details on what that's going to look like so we'll see xbox uh, did you see panda global's controller announcement last week of course, uh, yeah. they surpassed a million dollars on kickstarter in two days yeah i'm a big panda global fan i've, I've supported a, a good chunk of their kickstarters in the past yep. as well as a uh, i'll say like pretty pretty big smash fan mm -hmm. i'm a big i'm a big big fan of the scene i love a lot of the the main um 
the main players in the space itself, you know, players as in just like important people, not necessarily sure. players themselves. But I'm a big fan of the scene uh, and a lot of people involved in it. And we've done so much with the space that I it has a special place in my heart for sure. Um, and Panda Global really is just one of those companies, one of the only companies that supports the scene through and through. Yeah. Right, it's it's you know Nintendo doesn't really do too much with it here and there, right? Whatever, but for the most part, it's really always been community companies um, running it and, and making it better for the players. And Panda Global has took taken it like a full step further, mm -hmm. and like they're developing the products that Nintendo won't make for the community for the community. Yeah. And they're just like, hey, you know, if we want to do this, it's going to cost this much money, and everyone's like, here you go. Yeah, you know, like it's it's. You know, I'll you know if I'm an Overwatch fan, I'll spend hundreds of dollars on loot boxes a year. If I'm a Counter Strike fan, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on on crates a year. If I'm a you know whatever it is, right? Depending on obviously your budget and whatever it is, but if I'm a Smash fan, I have nothing to buy. I have nowhere to put my money into. It's literally just like you bought the fighter passes and then you're good. You know what I mean? That's nothing. What fifteen bucks a a quarter? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's it's scratching the surface of like what a lot of the disposable income of the community could be. So it's one of those things where they're like, hey, guys, like, you know, donate 100 bucks and we'll give you, like, the best controller you've ever seen. 200 bucks will customize it. 300 bucks this, 400 bucks that. Like, and, oh, you guys want a whole new feature where you can pick your own color? Like, it's, you know, let's get it to 400,000. And yeah. it's not like just like when the Kickstarter, the most recent Kickstarter I supported of theirs was like a, a Play Smash on the Go kit, mm -hmm. which worked great. I use it on planes and it's awesome. Um, but because uh, you can't plug your GameCube controllers into your Switch. Yes. So you need, like, a custom adapter, which yep. they made. And it's awesome. Um, but not the point. Um, but with this specifically, it's one of those things where it's not like you're just dumping your money in the trash. You're not like, okay, here's $100. Make something I like and I'll buy it. It's here's $100 for the controller that I'm buying mm -hmm. that helps the fundraiser or helps the Kickstarter. And I get the product that I want cheaper than it's going to be on retail. So it's, it's all benefits. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the product is incredible. So. Panda Global, yeah. 10 out of 10, really good, good, really good job. I'm not surprised with how successful, yeah. successful it's been. Obviously, you know, a million dollars in two days is pretty crazy, but uh, I think if you ask, you know, anybody in, in the Smash scene, nine times out of 10, they're going to be like, yeah, Panda Global is sick, if not like a higher percentage, right? So uh, I, I love it, and it's, again, a, a company that obviously has, uh, you know, great roots in the community, continues to put back... Uh, into the community and this is obviously something that players love and they're excited about and so rightfully so the Kickstarter's crushing it's gonna be awesome big things for Panic Global we've gotten to talk about them a few times uh, over the last few weeks so good for them uh, let's finish up with some of the big news over the weekend some big results in the shooter space we touched on uh, ALGS a little bit so we'll actually start there uh, first the split has finished split one of Pro League is done Top three finishes off with Sentinels, NRG, and then Esports Arena round out the top three. Uh, and what are your kind of thoughts? Did you watch uh, a lot over the weekend? What were your kind of thoughts on how things closed out? Um, watching Hal's stream is the correct way to view the ALGS. <laughs> and I will leave the rest of that alone. Okay. <laughs> um, and other than that, I would say it was an absolute blast to watch. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I would say that NRG and Sentinels are so lucky that we had a roster swap the last week. <laughs> you would have got smashed. Okay? <laughs> but, you know, we'll let them have we'll let them have first and second. We'll cruise into third. Not that big a deal either way. Yeah. Excited for um, obviously the playoffs and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it was really fun to watch. There's so many good teams right now um, in the metas and such. I feel like a fun spot with mm -hmm. the exception of Valkyrie. So, um, I, I liked it a lot. It's going to be interesting. One thing I do want to note of the 20 teams that qualified for split one playoffs in North America, over a third of the players that will be competing in the split one playoffs for North America, Series E pros. They either are currently Ooh. signed as a Series E player or were prior uh, to playoffs. So That's what we do, baby. You know, you're looking for fresh talent in the Apex Legends scene. We've got it. Verholst. Right Ever heard of them? <laughs> Definitely looking forward to it. I, I can't wait for the split one playoffs. I think it's going to be sick. Uh, let's finish with some Valorant news. Obviously, VCT Champions is going on right now. Uh, the stream is actually done for the day, but a ton of crazy news over the weekend. Uh, is there a specific story that stood out to you that you want to talk about? Maybe a specific match, or do you just want me to kind of run through 
the high level stuff. I'm gonna be 100 honest. You gotta give me the high level because Halos and ALGS and everything is consuming. I mean, me. there's a lot of and stuff. And I've that been we've like had. lagging on Valorant. I haven't even <laughs> used. I haven't even literally used a mouse and a keyboard in so many weeks yeah. that I feel like a casual again. Admittedly, I have as well. Uh, one thing to note: Sentinels, who were one of the favorites to win the tournament, are out in groups. They won their first matchup. Wow. They lost to TL. 1-2 to two in the upper bracket finals. And then Crew, the Latin American team, came through the lower bracket after losing their first match. They beat Sentinels today 2-1. to one. And very specifically, the last map was on split. Apparently, Sentinels and Tens specifically are terrible on split. But the first half, Sentinels are on attack. They take the first half 8-4. to four. They then proceed to lose the first six rounds of the second half before winning a single round on defense, they end up losing 13 to 11 to crew and they're done. Tens, I think had nine kills in a full 24 rounds. Um, if you guys, <laughs> if you guys check the description, you can find my Twitter, hit me up. I'll play. No problem. I guarantee a tenor. Double digit kills, no yes. problem. Every game. You okay. lose beast on split. <laughs> nah, yeah, Come on, but, dude, Sentinels, split. Sign them up. Put let's me let's in, go. Chief. Yeah. Let's go. Um, that's brutal. Yeah, so, honestly. Honestly. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have too much to say because I didn't get to watch it. Yeah. But I'll have to go back and, and watch it. Obviously, that's brutal to know. That last map is well worth watching. All the I think Sentinel the whole tweets, series for sure. All but. the Sentinel tweets make a lot more sense now. Mm hmm. I've been kind of, you know, I'm always on Twitter and stuff, but I've been seeing the tweets and I'm like, because I've just been ignoring all the Valorant and stuff. Sure. Because, like, I haven't caught up on it, like I said. But um, the Sentinel tweets make more sense now. Did you see the controversy over the weekend about Ascend and Vivo Keat? Mm -mm. So, for those of you home, if you didn't see what happened, uh, Ascend and Vivo Keed played a match uh, last, I think, I believe they played on Friday originally. Goes a full three maps. The last map was Breeze. Vivo Keed wins. But there was a ruling that came out after the map that it turned out one of the players on Vivo Keed was using a Cypher exploit uh, with his camera where you could like see through a wall and see players. Uh, apparently the exploit was used in six rounds. And so the original ruling, Riot came out and said, hey, use this exploit. Basically, you lose all of those rounds. We're giving those rounds to Ascend. Ascend now wins. There was a huge outcry. What they ended up going with was deciding, okay, we will, since they only won three of those rounds anyway, we're giving, taking three away, giving three to Ascend. It basically left the score then of the map at 12 to 10 and they went to ascend or and they said okay ascend what do you want to do either you can play the map starting 12 to 10 or we can give you a 7-0 lead and play the map from 7 to 0. ascend decides to go with a 7 to 0 start no dude they still won oh my god but they only won 13 to 10 with a oh 7-0 lead gosh. and the game was tied at 9-9 at one point <laughs> It was insane. The whole drama, especially because uh, it, the match, like the whole meme over the weekend was the match lasted 48 hours because technically it didn't end up finishing until 40, yeah. 48 hours after the original match started. But uh, it was insane. Group Sages has been crazy. We've had Fnatic return to form. Uh, C9 losing to Fnatic was insane. Sentinels obviously out. Uh, I know, uh, you know, I uh, personally even have not had a ton of time to watch it, but I'm definitely like this week slowly working my way back through the VODs. Next week, yes. Valorant talk. Yeah, and we will talk a bunch of Valorant. I, I'm looking forward to it, but I, all I'll say is like it was an insane weekend and the group stage was, was crazy and I think delivered a lot of good matches and I can't wait to go back and finish watching the rest of them. Um, but I would say we talked a lot about it, you know, being excited for champions. We wanted to see what Riot would do with a Valorant World Championship and so far... I'm impressed. I love it. I think the stage is super sick. Too. Oh yeah, I agree. I've been I've been looking at it. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, what have you been playing? Infinite and what else? Halo, 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 TFT game. Halo, 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 <laughs> Halo. Same here, honestly. But played a lot of Halo. Also, a little bit. Of, I was playing Minecraft last night. The new oh, update yeah, came out, that. and oh, it's so is much it fun? fun. Nice, it's so That's good. Cool. I'm glad you're having a good time with it. I'm just like, I love. It's I think the biggest 
update Minecraft has actually ever seen because it drastically just changes how world generation works and the current like map seed that I'm playing on you basically spawn inside a huge valley in between like all these icy peaked mountains and it's so cool that sounds cool I'm having a blast the caves are incredible I'm loving it so yes Halo a lot of Halo also play a little bit of Minecraft also going to be playing some Guilty Gear this week. Love I'm getting it. ready for... Grind time. Series E, baby. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Uh, that's going to do it, folks. 15 episodes in. The run continues. We Woo. haven't been canceled yet. Not so yet. So we're keeping One it going. One more episode. We'll see. I got spicy this episode. Right? Yeah. If you guys have uh, any questions, any hot takes you have for us, things you want us to talk about, make sure to hit us up on Twitter. Luke is at Shimonahee. On Twitter, I'm at Caster Yeso. We're looking forward to hearing from all of you. Make sure to turn in, tune into Series E this week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday. And Thursday. Don't miss out on that. We also have, I think, a little something special going on on Saturday that no I'm not gonna no I'm not gonna get into, but keep an eye out on our Twitter. You should be looking out for it. But that's gonna do it for us, folks. Have a great, great rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Bye.